and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode, we're looking at the next stage of moving on our start line behavior. So we've looked at weights. Now I want to talk to you about the next move in the start line and how I do my start lines. There are various ways you can do the start line. Some people have their dog in a heel position, come up to a jump, ask the dog to sit and wait there. How I do mine is I ask my dog to come through my legs and sit between my legs and facing wherever I want them to face. The reason for this is I can position myself at the jump exactly where I want my dog to be looking. So you imagine there's a line from my eyes going down to the ground where my dog is looking. I know where my dog is looking apart from the fact that I'm taller. So say I want my dog to jump over this jump and go over to that tunnel over there. I would look and I'd say right this is the best line to set my dog up on. So if I stand here and ask them to come into the weight position, I know they are going to be looking at pretty much what I'm looking at. So that's why I do this position. It is slightly more complicated than doing the heel work. Because if you suppose you've got your heel work and you just ask your dog to come in, good girl, sit. That is relatively straightforward to teach. Good girl. But did you know was that as she came in, she wasn't as neat. She was a bit, and I couldn't say for certain where she was facing. She was, she could go a bit wonky. Whereas if I do something like this with my legs, can you go start? Okay, girlie, start. Hi, good girl. Do you see how much straighter I can make sure she is? Good girl. Good girl. Okay, search. But as I say, that behavior is a little bit more complicated. The reason being is several elements. Element one is I'm asking my dog to go behind me. Good girl. Now, think about it. When you're doing a lot of your training, your dog is in front of you. So to ask, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we know to go behind me. Good girl. Break. So, <laughs> Yeah, we figured this one out. Um, so we do a lot of stuff with our dog facing us. So there's a lot of value for our dog looking at our face. <laughs> okay, I can see what we're doing now. Okay, I'm just gonna step off her, good girl, and just close my legs. <laughs> right, so when we begin, good girl, we do a lot of stuff with our dog sitting and looking at us. So there's a lot of value, it's on my hand, my love. Magpie, say hello, good girl. There's a lot of value for being in front of us, facing us. Asking us to, the dog to go behind us, it's, it's slightly unnatural if you think about it. The dog is breaking eye contact, going behind, and they go, hmm, not sure about that, not sure about that. So that's element one, getting your dog to go behind you. Element two is having your dog go between your legs. And the reason is this is tricky is that it's an element of trust. Some dogs found it very worrying to be that close to you. As a, you know, am I shelty Merlin he took a long while to get used to that idea because he didn't like being just that much closeness around he always liked to have space around him so being that close to me to him was a little bit mm, I don't like that so again that's element two next element once they're in there is the sit or if you can obviously if you want a down could be a stand but usually it's a sit or down so that's the position the dog's got to go into element four is the fact that your dog has got to remain in that position while you lift your leg and move away from them either to the left sorry to the right or to the left and if we want to say element six hang on, element five then that's when we move away so our dog has got to hold that position and move away but we'll concentrate on these elements first so you need to train each of these pieces separately and build them up into together to the picture so when i started with magpie as I say, it wasn't straightforward for her to go behind me. So what I did, as I learned, I had a treat. And then as she came here, I dropped it forward. So she came through my legs. And we did that game a few times. Okay, ready? Get it. There's there. Just, just played with that. <laughs> Good girl. And sometimes I would, I'd usually I'd just throw it on the floor. But sometimes I'd have some in my hand. So as she came through, I just rewarded it. Do that again. Good girl. I mean, obviously, she's got the hang of this one. It can take a while. 
Now I always teach to go around my right leg because I also do obedience. And so this is my finished position for obedience and that is slightly different. So that is why I always have her go around my right leg. It's just personal preference. That's my, my leg of choice. So once I'd got her going happily doing something like that and coming forward, then what I started to do is instead of throwing it, show you break, as she's coming through, I just reward. Good girl. So now what I was doing is teaching her, yes, you're coming through my legs, but you're actually stopping. You're not carrying on moving. Good. So you're stopping here. I don't want you to keep moving forward. So we've built up the idea, the confidence of coming through my legs. And the reason we ask them to come through our legs to begin with is because for many dogs, that's more comfortable to keep moving rather than to ask them to stop. This can be a high pressure area for the dogs. They feel a bit stressed there. So by asking them to just come through and carry on straight, it just builds up a little bit of confidence. Very rapidly, she started to offer a sit because that is a high value position for Magpie anyway. And because I was here, it was easier for her to hold a sit because she could look up at me. So without actually having to teach the sit, she started to offer it. Good girl. Now, if you wanted a down, you would obviously have had to have taught her down separately. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. With the sit, as I say, it's kind of a position that it, you can shape them into. The down is slightly harder because you're going to have to ask them to... to perform the down in a different way. With the sit, they, they, they just tend to choose it. With the down, you're going to have to ask them to perform a down looking away from you. So I'm not sure if she will. Let's see. Down. See, she's never done that. So that, that threw her. She obviously can do downs. Magpie, sit. Down. Down. Oh dear, she's, I can't do it in a field. Don't, try, don't ask me to do a down in a field, woman. Break. Okay, sit down. I think the grass is a bit wet. I don't think we're going to do a down on the grass. But the point is, she can do downs while facing me and at the side of me. But now I'm behind her. And dogs learn in context. So yes, she can do it beside me and ahead of me. But when you're behind me, mother, and looking down on me like that, I'm not sure I can. So that's something you'd have to work up with too. So you could obviously lure it. I, I, say, I don't think she's going to do it. The grass is too wet. But you could lure it <laughs> looks like you would or if you get a really good down cue on a verbal you might find that you can say the down anyway and they'll start to do it anyway uh, because you've got that very strong verbal cue that whatever I'm doing and I say down you do a down so that's just something to play with so that's element two she stopped there sorry element two and three she's come through the legs she stopped there she's picked the position up so now the next part is, good girl, lifting, me moving so that she remains there so I can move off. This is probably the hardest part after getting them comfortable with coming between your legs. Because at this stage, again, it's that trust element. That's going, mm, what, what are you doing? You're moving your foot. Again, this was an element that Merlin got really worried about. Merlin has, was very sensitive about being touched, especially around his tail and feet. Anything involving me moving my feet around him, he got worried about it. He was very sensitive about it. He was worried about his tail being still on his feet. Being, he always said that. So it, it can be something that takes time. So how I would do that, once I know she's coming down, can you come here? Stop. Once I know she's coming through my legs, like that, as I'm feeding her, I'm just going to lift a leg. Actually, I wouldn't even do it that much. I'd just lift a toe. Do -do. Like that. Subtle movement, then just lift the foot a little bit. Good girl break. Now you can see she's quite comfortable with that because we've done this. I would suggest you work on one side then work and the other side separately because obviously you're going to one time you're going to be stepping over to your right and one time you're going to be stepping over to your left. Okay so as I was moving on and I just gradually build it up so I don't like to do anything where I hover over their back with my foot too much. I think that can be a bit of a it feels a bit threatening to them so as soon as I can start lifting my foot I want to lift it right over them. And I usually try and keep this leg static so we're not putting too much pressure on them movement wise. You can obviously feed them while you're doing that. Good girl. Break. And then as you get better, start. you can move the leg 
and experiment with when you need to de deploy the treat. So it might be a case that initially you treat them, reward them as you move your leg. Then it might be a case as you move the leg and instantly reward them. And then of course you move the leg and give them a reward a couple of seconds after and just build up. So now you can see I've moved off. Good girl, sit. And now I can start building up to my weights as I was doing before. And this is the bit, the next stage that went, could go a bit wrong. So again, it's just one little step. Because again, I've changed the picture. I've changed the picture from the weights we were doing previously. And now it looks different because I stepped over her. So we just have to build up that weight again. So I just do, nice. And then I'm gonna keep moving it on. Nice. Break. So you see how you gradually build in all these parts. Obviously I've done the leg on this side. Now I'm gonna do the leg on the other side. Good. Nice. Oops, I made you get up. So she sometimes still gets up out of it, you know, we're still working on it. It's gonna take time. Eventually, you put a lot of value into this position. You're gonna have a dog that's quite happy to do this, will offer it anytime you want, and is gonna be really solid in it. It is something you need to continually reward through their lives, I believe. I think this is something you really need to put value into. Just do it in your living room and keep doing that. Last thing I want to talk to you about is gestures. With her, I'm using start as my word. Some people use legs, because legs, but start for me is what I've always used. And I use this hand signal because this was the hand signal I did when I was learning. So start, good girl. That was the hand signal, so she's used to that. With some of my other dogs, I tap my leg. Okay, break. But for her, good girl, start. The hand gesture back, just the flick there works. Good girl, break. And you can see how much value she's got for going into that position then she'll just offer it all the time now so if i constantly build up and offer that she's going to be yeah i know i didn't reward you for that one yeah so you see it's just so rewarding for her now that she just goes yep if you stood there i'll offer that so that's your next stage in your start lines to put in that positional work and this is all baby stages doing it very quietly building it on and as we progress obviously we'll look at things taking it to the next level but I hope that all makes sense and I hope you enjoy teaching this with your dog. And if you've enjoyed this video, you might like to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.